In our last lecture, we talked about this process called glycolysis. And glycolysis is extremely important because glucose is made up of six carbons. So it's C6H12O6. And here's the thing. C6H12O6 is a little too big of a molecule. Just like if you were to try to eat a sandwich and you took a big bite out of that sandwich, you can't just swallow it whole. You have to chew it first. So glycolysis is this really important process that happens in the cell before it gets broken down further where the six carbon glucose is broken down into two three carbon molecules called pyruvate. So that's what's going on here. Glycolysis is going to have glucose break down into form pyruvate. And then from there, that pyruvate is going to do one of two things. And it depends on whether or not oxygen is present. So if oxygen is present, it's going to go into the mitochondria and it's going to go through this really involved process where you're going to have it broken down even further and you're going to make a whole lot of energy out of it. But let's say oxygen is not present. Let's say there's still no oxygen. Well, that's going to be what we talk about today. If there's no oxygen present, that pyruvate is still going to be able to use some, it's still going to be able to go through a process to make some energy, just not a lot of energy. And that is called fermentation. And fermentation, you guys have all experienced fermentation before. Because if you've ever had a muscle, if you've ever felt burning sensation in your muscles, if you ever have been exercising and working out, and then all of a sudden your muscle starts to burn a little bit, that's because your cells are going through fermentation. Or if you've ever eaten cheese before, if you've ever had yogurt before, if you've ever had um, kombucha or any of those, those are all fermented. Kimchi, sauerkraut, these are all fermented foods in which bacteria breaks it down and it uses that sugar for energy. That is called fermentation. And that's what we're going to be talking about today, this process called fermentation. So let's get rolling. So this is when, when, when there's no oxygen present. And there's two types of fermentation that occur in cells. There's alcoholic fermentation and there's lactic acid fermentation. We do not go through alcoholic fermentation. If we went through alcoholic fermentation, what that means is every time you are try to use a muscle, you would feel a little drunk. Well, now that might, that might sound good on paper. That would not be good. You would not want that feeling all the time. But what happens here? Well, let's take a look at what happens. So let's say I go through this process called glycolysis. And what I get as a byproduct is I get pyruvic acid and I get NADH. And that is that thing that gets given off. That is that charged battery that I talked about that is used to make energy. But also, glycolysis gives off a little bit of energy. It gives off two ATP every time it goes through glycolysis. So what fermentation does is it lets that process keep going. And I'll explain that better in a minute. But what I want you to see here is what goes in is you get pyruvic acid from glycolysis. So glucose gets broken down into pyruvic acid. So it's a three carbon molecule. And then that combined with NADH, which is that very important charged battery, is going to give us some byproducts. And what it's going to give us is it's going to give us alcohol as a byproduct. It's going to give us carbon dioxide as a byproduct. And it's going to give us an uncharged NAD, which can get used to be charged again. So who goes through this process? What organisms go through this? Well, the organisms that go through this are going to be things like bacteria, specifically yeast. So where have you heard of yeast before? Well, beer is made with yeast. Um, that is what makes beer, actually. All beer is is grains like wheat and barley. That that's sugar, right? That's a molecule. That's that's that cellulose that we talked about. That's that sugar that exists. You put that in with some yeast, and what ends up happening is the yeast, which is living, eats the the sugar, and it gives off two things in in response to that. It gives off alcohol and it gives off carbon dioxide, and that is why beer is bubbly. If you've ever seen beer before, it's got carbonation in there. That's because the oxygen, I'm sorry, that's because the actual yeast is breathing carbon dioxide out. That is also why bread rises. If you've ever made bread before, bread, you need yeast, which is the bacteria, right? It's those microorganisms. You put that in your dough and the flour and the sugar, it, flour is sugar, right? Flour is just carbohydrates. The sugar gets eaten by the yeast and what it does in the byproduct is it causes carbon dioxide to get given off. So if you've ever seen bread rise, if you've ever made bread before, the dough rises, it expands. And that's because the carbon dioxide is being given off and it's making that dough rise. Well, why doesn't 
bread make you drunk then? Because it's given off alcohol. Well, the reason why bread doesn't make you drunk is because when you cook the bread, the alcohol actually gets cooked off in the process. So alcohol fermentation is very simply taking in pyruvic acid from glycolysis, right? It takes the NADH from that process as well, and it uses it to make alcohol and carbon dioxide, but more importantly, it produces this NAD, which can get used to make this process go over and over again. The second type of fermentation is called lactic acid fermentation. And this is one that we go through. We go through this process in our muscles. If you've ever felt a burning sensation in your muscles, that's because you've run out of oxygen and now your body's going through this process. So we can go through this process. So in this one, just like before, you get pyruvic acid and NADH from glycolysis, but these type of bacteria, or these type, not just bacteria, our cells do it as well, they give off a molecule called lactic acid acid and then that NAD molecule which gets used over and over again. So this happens when you run out of usable oxygen. So if you've ever done an exercise before and you're, let's say you're doing 10 reps of a curl, right? And you get to the eighth rep and you start to feel a really burning sensation in your muscles. What you're feeling there is you're feeling your muscles running out of oxygen. And then they make just enough energy to get you through the exercise. And then eventually your arm's going to fail on you. And that's because of lactic acid. But that lactic acid also has a bitter flavor to it. It's acidic. And that's what we use to make things like milk, um, cheese, yogurt, sour cream. If you've ever had sour cream before or yogurt has a very like kind of bitter taste to it. It's got a real sour taste. That is lactic acid. That's what you're tasting there. So lactic acid fermentation works the same way as alcoholic fermentation. A small organism, bacteria or yeast, breaks down the sugar in pyruvic acid and it produces usable energy. So let me just explain it a little bit better and then we'll move on. So what we see here are two scenarios. This is fermentation. In this top one, we have glucose gets broken down by glycolysis. And in the process, you get a little bit of ATP. This is not enough to live off of for us. We cannot live off of this. This is just enough to get us by. Now, bacteria can live off of it because bacteria is a very small, basic organism. It's a one-celled organism. It would be like having a little tiny go-kart versus an SUV. Obviously, a go-kart doesn't need as much energy to run as an SUV. Well, bacteria doesn't need as much energy, so they can get by with this little bit of ATP. So glycolysis occurs, and then we have our fermentation, and we get our lactic acid, and then that NAD allows this process to keep going. So basically, what fermentation does is it allows glycolysis to just keep going and going and going, and we can keep churning out these two ATP molecules over and over again. Now, it's not enough to live off of if you're us, but it's enough to survive, let's say, if you're being chased by a lion and you need to run a little farther. That little bit of ATP might get you there, and that's why we have these processes. They allow these organisms to make a little bit of energy. So just to finish up here, what I have is my little diagram. So glycolysis occurs, right? So we have our glycolysis. That happens in the cell, and then we get our pyruvic acid. Now from here, two things can happen. If oxygen is present, if we have oxygen, these can then, that's called aerobic. Aerobic means with oxygen. This molecule can go into the mitochondria, and what you're going to get is you're going to get a whole lot of energy. You're going to get 36 ATP for every one glucose that goes in. So remember, each that would be two times this because that would be two pyruvates for each 36 ATP. Fermentation, on the other hand, that means there's no oxygen. So if there's no oxygen present, it can go this route, and that goes through fermentation, where you can have lactic acid fermentation or you can have alcoholic. But the thing I want to point out here is these both only make two ATP. So which one are you going to prefer? Well, let's say, all right, guys, uh, if I said, all right, if you give me $2 today, I'm going to give you $4 tomorrow. Or if I say, if you give me $2 today, I'm going to give you $36 tomorrow. So $2, right? You have two options. You can either make $4 out of it or you can make $36 out of it, right? Which one are you going to choose? Well, you're obviously going to choose the more, you're going to choose more money, right? I'm going to give you $36. $4 only makes you $2. That's not that much money. You can't live off $2. But this one is going to make you $34 because you only had to give me two. So the point I'm trying to make here is this is the better option. But you don't always have oxygen present. And when oxygen is not present, this process will occur.
and it will get you some energy. It just won't get you as much, and we can't live off of two ATP. A bacteria cell can, but we can't. Okay, that's a little bit about fermentation. Thank you very much.